Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. She can number crunch with the best of the money. Ooh, yes. She's considered by many to be the top black personal financial expert in the country. Oh, yeah. Through her financial campaign, Dreamcatcher, she's helped 800,000 women worldwide pay off over $75 million in debt. Please Ooh, welcome Tiffany, good. the budgetista. Yes. 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 Hey, hey, Tiffany. Hey, We are so excited. I'm telling you, I was like, I'm so excited for Tiffany to be here today. Okay, so let's talk about you first. You are a preschool teacher for 10 years, but the money and saving of it was pulling at your heart. What exactly, talk about that transition from being in the classroom to teaching people how to save money. It surprisingly wasn't as difficult. So my father was a CFO and an accountant, okay. and I'm one of five girls. Mm -hmm. And so growing up, my parents taught us about money all the time. We would That's literally so nice. have Thursday night, Monday, like money class. That's so oh, nice. nice. Like, this is how you budget, this is how you save. You're not getting wow. a sweet 16, you're getting a bank account. Yes. Wow. You know? <laughs> so when I got to college, I quickly realized that so many young women who were my age didn't know how to do any of those mm -hmm. things. And so I started to show them. Yeah. And I didn't think anything of it, and I became a school teacher. I went to school for business, but hated all of my internship mm -hmm. <laughs> but I became a school teacher because I always loved kids and, and teaching and even then I would teach the parents during that time really mm -hmm. I would teach the the other teachers the principal and then with, when the recession hit and my school closed because it lost its funding mm -hmm. I thought this is really the opportunity because as I was rebuilding myself mm -hmm. I was really starting to help other people rebuild yes. look at mm -hmm. God he was just born into it sure yes. 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 so I was fortunate because when you learn to teach preschool you can teach anybody yeah, that's that's true. True. you know that's what because you so can true. speak to their level yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and be very patient yes. Yes. Very patient. absolutely absolutely yes. so we are all business women here, and there are a lot of business women out there. And you have these five steps to financial wholeness. Yes. So I'm going to kick things off. Okay. okay? I'm going to jump on when we're done. Okay. So let's, talk, let's talk about number one semi automated budgeting. What is that? So a budget is the foundation for the rest of your financial life. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you've got Oprah money or you have the girl down the street money, right? You have to have a budget. It's really just a physical picture of what your money is doing. And if you don't like what the picture looks like, you can slowly start working toward what you want it to look like. So mm -hmm. your budget listing everything that you spend money on, I like to start that off and call that a money list. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to write down how much everything costs yeah. on that money list monthly. So you really want to know money in, money out monthly. And then you're going to subtract what your take home pay is from what your monthly expenses are. Got you know, so typically I call that the tears and tissue step. That's when you find out that you're spending oh, way more than, than you actually have. Yes. And then you want to automate that process because here's the thing, we're human beings and we struggle when it comes to managing our money. So if you can manage your budget, if you can manage and automate your money in and money out, it's really just going to help take that off the table. But you have to start with that foundation. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. is, an, is that an accountant's job? So like when you hire an accountant to mm -hmm. do your mm -hmm. finances, should he sit down with you? Is that what people should look for when they go have meetings with mm -hmm. different accountants? Should he say, this is what your budget is going to be. We're going to work on getting you in this place. Like he should, should a, should a CPA or an accountant sit down and, and do that Not with you? necessarily. They don't have to. I mean, I would, if your accountant doesn't do that, I wouldn't say that's a market of accountant that's not doing a good job. Honestly, your budget falls on you. Mm -hmm. And so that they are there to support and to say you might be going over or this is what you're able to do, but ultimately you know your life. Mm. You know you look after your sister. You know that you want to save for Paris because who can know those things but you? Right. So really when it comes to the budget, you really have to bring that to the table and then you can have your financial professional support you in that. Mm. Well, talk to us a little bit more, Tiffany, about automated investment plans. Mm. So investing mm. is everything mm. because you cannot budget and save your way to wealth. Right? Very rarely are you going to find someone who's like, I'm a millionaire because I budgeted and I saved. <laughs> no, that's really just the foundation for wealth, right? You have to grow that seed. You can collect a, a, a hundred seeds and grow it to a million. It's so much easier than trying to collect a million seeds, right? right yeah. Because you could plant a seed. Let's just say it's an apple tree, right? You plant a seed. The seed grows into a tree. If you take care of that tree, that tree yields fruit, which is apples, and inside that fruit is more seeds. Right. You know? Right. Right. And right. so you have to understand that investing is a critical component if you want to grow wealth, and semi-automating that is really gonna be your friend. Your yes. investments should almost be boring. Yes. You know, I know people like to think of like, there's nothing okay, wrong with was, yeah. right, trading on the stock market, mm -hmm. but things like mutual funds, real estate, entrepreneurship, these are really some great solid foundations mm -hmm. into growing wealth. 
Now, let me ask you this, and I know a million of millions of Americans <laughs> want to know this mm -hmm. answer. <laughs> we all owe Uncle, Uncle Sam. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. And uh, most of us, uh, we owe student loans. Yes. Okay. I'm a whole recording artist and uh, a talk show host, and I still got student loans mm -hmm. down to down to down to my back. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Sally Mae, they, they, them Riding and Uncle the Sam, they mm -hmm. gonna get their cheats. Yes. yes. Regardless. So, what are some of the uh, techniques that we can use to pay down this type of debt, and I mean, especially since it's reoccurring, not really yes. student loans, but taxes. So debt in general, I mean, it's nobody's friend, right? Yeah. Because when you owe somebody, that means not all of the money that you receive belongs to you. Yes. Right? So. Remember when you first, if you went to college or you first got your first grown pe person job, mm -hmm. you get your money, you're excited, then you realize, wait, most of this is not even mine. Right. 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 And so that's a difficult thing. But here's the thing. It is possible for you to create a debt pay down plan because I want you to understand this, that debt free does not equal wealth. That I don't want you to focus all of your energy on getting debt free. That there's a study that's out that shows that brown folks mm -hmm. tend to focus their financial goals are being debt free. Oh my. Everyone else, their oh focus is growing well. But here's the thing, there are three year olds with no debt. Are they wealthy? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, so it's not the same. You want to create an automated debt plan. There's there's the the Anvil Avalanche method. There's the snowball method, and that's the snowball method is just paying down the debt with the highest interest rate per first because that's the more expensive debt. And the avalanche method is to pay down the debt that has the lowest balance first. Right. Because mm. that way, I like that one the best. Yes, because I like that. that way you can really focus on paying down, you get early wins. Yeah. Yes. You know? And so, but automating that method. Yes. And then once you automate it, not set it and forget it, but, but set it and, and just look at it yes. and then focus your energy on growth. Wealth because wealth will take care of debt. Yes, mm. we're gonna have more of you this mom. wealth of knowledge from <laughs> Tiffany the Budgetista when we return. Yes, more with her. So you stay right where you are. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. She was so good. Yeah, we yeah. had to uh, keep it going. Man, yeah. <laughs> the budgetista yeah. is going to give us some more pointers to help us with our budgets in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. Now you say it's possible for us to save three months of expenses. Now this can be difficult mm -hmm. when life throws you a whole bunch of stuff yeah. and you had a little bit saved up and then that is gone. So it's but not just you, possible, it's imperative. It's imperative. Yes. Okay. Right? So here's the thing. You can be debt free, but if you have no savings, really you're you're in debt deferred. So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Let's just say you say, I've got two hundred dollars in, in my savings account, my credit card is two hundred dollars. I'm actually gonna drain my savings, pay off my credit card, woo woo, I'm debt free. Yeah, but you're broke. Because as soon as your car breaks down, what you gonna do? No. Swipe that credit card, card, again, card again and be right back into debt. That's right. true. So you're wanting to work on debt, but also work on savings. So I say identify what's called a noodle budget. Mm. And so what that is, is if you had to eat ramen noodles, mm. ooh, we've all been there, right? Yes. Meaning the, the cheapest monthly life that you can get yourself down to. If you had to get down to that, what would that cost you a month? Not that you're gonna live there, but what are those expenses monthly? Save three months of that. Mm. Because if the going gets really tough, you can reduce your expenses, and then you can live at your noodle budget for as long as you need to until you have more money coming in. Right. You're wanting to save that money, so it could be 50 bucks a check, 100, whatever it is that you could squeeze your, from your budget until you can get to that space where you have at least three months worth of savings, mm -hmm. right? And then you're gonna wanna put that money in an online only bank mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, they give higher interest. Mm -hmm. They don't have the brick and mortar of a normal bank, mm -hmm. so they don't have to pay for as many things, so you get that interest paid to you. And two, a, an online only bank is not as convenient. Mm -hmm. You have to link it to your regular bank yes. to get your money back, and that's usually about a 24 to 72 hour wait to get your money back. Right. Right. And so that transfer means that your money is inconvenient, and inconvenient money gets saved. Ha! Mm -hmm. Cause see, my say the way my savings set up. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> <my laughs> You did that one thing. I did that with my, my husband. I, I had him set up too much. his online only bank account, and within a few months, he was like, "Wait, because you don't see the money." Yeah. And it's before you know, you're saving way more because you're like, "I just." can't swipe that money away. Do not open up a checking account at that online only bank. Only mm -hmm. a savings account. Can you have it where it's automated? Yes, all, yes. That automation is the new automation discipline. Automation is how I roll. It is the new discipline. <laughs> yeah. I roll with automation. Right. Now let's not talk about discipline it. and debt and paying off mm -hmm. debt. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this credit score. Yes. Mm -hmm. What can we do to raise it? I like a real high number. Yes. <laughs> so right, I'm a little nasty credit oh, score. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's 780. Yeah. <laughs> it's stupid. I mean, you just got, I get, get held back two grades. Right. It's so <laughs> 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 That's good, Trina. Yeah. 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 So, first things first, you, 
have to understand, so credit scores range about from 300 to 850, mm -hmm. right? So people have 850, they feel themselves, but sis, if you have a 750, it's the same as having an 850. Sure because it's a range. Don't let your 800 friend make you feel bad because you guys are going to get the same interest rate. Right. Same interest rate. Interest rate. Because it's really about range, yes. right? So that's one thing. Understand that 750 is the perfect, it's perfect credit. What if it's about a smooth six something? Right. Well, that's what you <laughs> understand there, there are five components to yes. your credit score but the two most co important components are one 35% is payment history. That mm -hmm. means, are you paying the people their money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When automation. you owe it to them. Mm -hmm. So that's 35% of your score. Yes, automate that. Don't play mm -hmm. with the automation. And then two, debts owed. They want to see that, yes, you're using the credit allowed, but you're not maxing out. Mm -hmm. You really want to stay well under 30% of what your credit card limit mm -hmm. is, well under. Really, you want to stay in that 10, 15 percent range, mm -hmm. especially yeah. if you're wanting to buy something. And that DTI is real important. Yes, that debt to income ratio. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you keep if you keep your your balance low in comparison to your limits, that's 30 percent mm -hmm. of your score. That's a mouth old. So if you focus on those two things, and and here's a little little nugget that really helped to grow my credit score. Pay off a credit card in full every month. Yes, God. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much, right? So it could be, literally be. 10 bucks from the gym, mm -hmm. right? So $10 every month, you have it automatically charged. So the gym charges your card, and then your bank account pays off that card every yep. month. You do that, and you're going to see your credit score jump. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so true, true, too. So let's talk about yes. the huge legislative moves you've been making. So you got a bill passed, the Budgetista no. bill passed. <laughs> really? Yes, yeah. huh. yeah, you did in New Jersey. <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about that and how, how that happened for you. So a friend of mine, um, Angela V. McKnight, she is mm -hmm. an assembly woman mm -hmm. in Jersey City. And she she came up to me and was like, Tiffany, I'm a new assembly woman. I want to pass some a strong legislation as it relates to financial education. Mm. I said, there's already a bill in place or a law in place for high school, but there really should be something in place for middle school and even elementary yeah. school, that's, that's right, cool. to normalize talking about financial education. And so we worked on a bill together. We went through the education committee, the House, the Senate. It took three years, mm. but January 2019, we got that bill passed into wow. law. Wow. Yeah. The law in the state of New Jersey, the element that middle school students must get financial education in the school system. Yes. So we're going back for elementary mm -hmm. this year as well. So mm -hmm. now you're saying so they're going to have to um, change their curriculum. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. They're so going to have to, yes. Okay, economic awareness. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. That is so good. Amazing. 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 See, you could have kept all this information at your house when y'all had the budget <laughs> sessions <laughs> with your parents. But you decided to share, share the wealth. That, share shows, the wealth. that shows your heart. Yes. I really believe that giving activates abundance, it right? Does. And yes, that too much does, is given, girl. much is required. Yeah, and so you have to share your gifts with, with the world. So. Yes. Hey, y'all don't like sis. Y'all know why sis is so Y'all don't want to win in life. Right. Right. Look at our gifts. Right. <laughs> this information is so cold. You got to want to win. And it's free. <laughs> it's free. And it's free. And it's free 99. And it's A-M-A-Z-I-N. Yes, yes, it is. And so <laughs> is she, the budgetista. Can yes. we give it up for Tiffany, the budgetista? And if you'd like more information on how to join the movement, of course, it's Budgetista's Dream Catchers Movement. Go to thebudgetista.com. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your love yes. and light with us. Thank you for having me. She'll be back, and we'll be back. All right.